Spice Age Europe. His kind thrived here for over 200,000 years. Then suddenly, they vanished. The Neanderthals. Today, their ancient bones fuel a debate about what it means to be human. Did this strange creature go extinct? Or did he become one of us? A cave in Germany's Neander Valley yields an odd skeleton. More man than ape, yet not fully human. Soon, similar fossils across Europe are dubbed Neanderthal, and the cliché of the caveman is born. Slow-witted and savage, deprived of physical grace and moral virtue. Thus are Neanderthals depicted well into the 20th century. The reputation is undeserved, says Milford Wolpoff, paleoanthropologist with the University of Michigan. His research brings him to a rock shelter near the Croatian town of Krapina. Here, at the turn of the century, hundreds of Neanderthal bones were unearthed. The site has been commemorated with a sculptor's rendering of a Neanderthal family. The statues seem evocative or merely amusing to most visitors, not to Wolpoff. There were never Neanderthals like this. It's all wrong. It's wrong from the top to the bottom. First of all, these people live in Europe during the coldest part of the last glaciation. They're naked. They're not wearing anything. It's crazy. These folks wore clothing. We know they did because we could find the tools that they made their clothing from. Uh, they have them throwing rocks down on animals, as though animals would stand still for some Neanderthal to stand over their head and drop a rock on it. The fact is, is that Neanderthals were never like this. Even physically, Neanderthals are robust. They're big-shouldered. They're muscular. They're short-limbed, they're adapted to the cold, and they use a lot of physical strength during their lifetime. According to the fossil record, the earliest Neanderthals evolved from a more primitive ancestor over 200,000 years ago. They lived lightly on the land and left behind few traces. It seems they pitched no tents, built no villages, painted no caves. They left little more than bones and stone tools. These have been found in caves and rock shelters across Europe, in Central Asia, and as far south as the Middle East. But the Neanderthals gazed upon a landscape we would hardly recognize. Theirs was a world in the grips of the last ice age. Sheets of ice up to a mile thick straddled northern Europe and flowed into the open plains of Germany and France. Mammoth and woolly rhinoceros roamed the land. This glacial climate shaped the Neanderthal's anatomy. Their huge noses warmed and humidified the cold, dry air. Short, stocky bodies were efficient at conserving heat. Endowed with brains slightly larger than our own, Neanderthals also coped by taming fire, making clothing, and producing stone tools. Each toolmaker learned the same age-old technique. Today, that tradition lives on in the hands of archaeologist Nick Barton of the University of Oxford. By studying Neanderthal tools, he has taught himself how to reproduce them.
Right, well, this is the scraping edge now. These sorts of tools we think we use for processing or working hides. For example, like the piece of leather which is on my thigh could be scraped in order to remove the fat and the grease from the, this piece of animal skin. With their tools and unique anatomy, Neanderthals adapted to their world, but they were pushed to their limits. X-rays of bones found at Krapina show severe trauma, including compound fractures. Many Neanderthals lived with chronic pain. Less than one in 10 reached the age of 40. And yet, their concerns went beyond mere survival. Excavations at a cave in Iran revealed the Neanderthals buried their dead. An elder in his 40s was laid to rest in a shallow trench, his body arranged like a sleeping child. Blinded in one eye and virtually crippled for years, he had been cared for in life as in death. In a nearby burial, the soil was rich with fossilized pollen, a sign that flowers had been placed upon the body of a loved one. The spirit of this gesture reaches us across 60,000 years. Though their ways were simple, the Neanderthals harbored a spark of fully modern behavior. But were they our ancestors, or were they pushed to the edge of extinction by an aggressive newcomer? Robust hunter-gatherers well adapted to the Ice Age. This new portrait of the Neanderthals has come to light. But one great mystery remains. Why, after 200,000 years of existence, did they suddenly disappear? The fossil record is clear. By 25,000 years ago, a new breed of Europeans stood in their place. Taller, more slender than the big-boned, heavy-browed Neanderthals, these people had another unique attribute. They created art. The meaning of their magnificent paintings and sculptures eludes us, but the message is clear. Here was a complex and vibrant culture. Here was a new sense of self. Who were these people? Where did they come from? Scientists are divided on the issue. Two possible scenarios have emerged. Both agree that our species evolved from Homo erectus, who appeared in Africa about two million years ago. According to the first scenario, the descendants of Homo erectus in Europe became the Neanderthals. They, in turn, slowly evolve into modern humans. In the second scenario, Neanderthals are an evolutionary dead end. Only the African descendants of Homo erectus become modern. As they spread across the world, they replace everyone else. The coast of Africa. Somewhere on this continent, four to six million years ago, a small ape-like creature began to walk upright. By a million and a half years ago, its descendant, Homo erectus, would stride out of Africa. During the last ice age, Gibraltar at the southern tip of Spain was home to Neanderthals, then modern humans. Gorham's cave may preserve clues to the transition between these two groups. That prospect attracts a team of archaeologists and paleontologists, including Christopher Stringer of London's Natural History Museum. He expects to find an abrupt shift between two different mindsets. Modern humans had uh, a much more complex social system, and art was part of that more complex social system, complex way of adapting. I think modern humans 
were able to look ahead and look back over long time distances. I think the Neanderthals lived mainly for the present. Modern humans look back into the past through mythology and stories and traditions, and they look forward also far into the future. They were able to plan ahead uh, for, for long periods of time, uh, for years ahead sometimes. The first anatomically modern people appear over 100,000 years ago in Africa, then in the Middle East. In their features, Stringer sees the roots of our kind. The overall pattern of the skull is a modern one. We've got a fairly high forehead. We've got a rounded skull. It's rather high. Um, we've got a face which is broad and flat. And again, that is a face that we find in early modern humans all over the world. According to Stringer, these early moderns eventually migrated into Europe during the Ice Age. 40,000 years ago, two rival clans might have faced off across the snowy plain. I see no reason to assume that the Neanderthals never had any contact with these newcomers. There could well have been contact. There could have been exchange in some areas. There could even have been interbreeding, but essentially, this led to the demise of the Neanderthals. They had been evolving in Europe for two or three hundred thousand years, and the arrival of these newcomers was really the, uh, the beginning of their end. No simple path led from primitive to more advanced humans. Evolution is like a game of chance. I think that we can treat human evolution over the last two million years as being like dealing a pack of cards from Africa. And my card table here is a map of the world. About two million years ago, Homo erectus appeared in Africa. So a million and a half years ago, erectus goes to the Far East. Probably a million years ago, Homo erectus was in Europe. And then we get evolution over the next million years in each of these regions. In Europe, for example, we have, we know, the Neanderthals in Gibraltar. They're present in the rest of Europe. They're present in the Middle East. But in Africa, evolution took a different course. And there, we get the appearance, by 100,000 years ago, of Homo sapiens, modern humans. So they're there 100,000 years ago. And they spread quite quickly to the Middle East, about 100,000 years ago. And later on, by about 50,000 years ago, they are in the Far East. And there's a replacement of the previous populations outside of Africa in this second deal. In Asia, the descendants of Homo erectus are replaced. In the Middle East, the Neanderthals are replaced. And finally, in Europe, by 40,000 years ago, the Neanderthals are replaced. And so, in that last deal, the deal that gave rise to all of us, we end up only with modern humans all over the world. If Stringer is right, the Neanderthals were just one of several populations of archaic humans to go extinct. But another scientist thinks the cards were stacked quite differently. The Earth tends to erase the past. Human fossils are extremely rare. The Croatian site of Krapina is considered a treasure trove. Nearly a thousand fragments of Neanderthal bone were unearthed there. For two decades, Milford Wolpov has studied the Krapina fossils for clues to the Neanderthal's fate. Stored in a museum in Zagreb, the bones represent about three dozen individuals and span some 50,000 years. To Wolpov, they highlight the range of Neanderthal anatomy. Here at Krapina are found features that are really modern features, but they're rare. They're not found often. But it tells us that the gene pool had the potential of evolving into a modern direction because the features are there that it could evolve from. Let me show you exactly what I mean when I say within the Krapina range of variation, we can find the modern condition. Here's a good set of thick Neanderthal brow ridges. You see the thickness over the orbits here. And modern people often have these. This is a skull from the region about 3,000 years old. And the same thick brow ridges are here, but they've thinned considerably to the side. They're only thick in the middle. The sides are quite thin. Now, what I'd like to show you is that Krapina really encompasses those conditions. We can go from a thick set 
Let me just make the comparison here so you can see what the, the similarity is. Here's a thick set, even thicker than I showed you. And here's a thinner specimen, just looking at the vertical thinness here, and it's beginning to thin toward the outside. So you see, we're evolving this in the modern direction, not by having the variation change at Crapina, but by showing that Crapina has the basis for evolving the modern morphology out of. To the north of Crapina, in a cave near the Croatian town of Vindia, Wopov finds another piece of the Neanderthal puzzle. For two decades, teams from Zagreb's Natural History Museum have explored the site. Their finds include the remains of some of the last Neanderthals in Europe. These bones are less robust than those found at Krapina. To Wolpov, they provide an evolutionary link between the earlier, more archaic Neanderthals and modern humans. Key to Wolpov's theory is the idea of gene flow. Just as populations today travel, mingle, and share characteristics, so the Neanderthals had contact with other archaic people on the outskirts of Europe. Over evolutionary time, gene flow would endow each population with similar modern features. The evidence, as I understand it, shows that different features that we have, different modern successful features, appeared in different places. And they spread widely because populations were always interconnected, just as we see in Western Asia, where there's interbreeding between different folk. So that perhaps we have in South Africa, brow ridges disappear quickly. Perhaps in North Asia, crania become thin. Perhaps in Europe, crania become large. These all intersect with each other, these ripples where the features come together. It's the ripples that make us modern. One group has not been modern longer than others. One group didn't become modern first. Modernity is the coalescence of what really worked. If Wolpoff is right, the Neanderthals played a role in our evolution, and their legacy lives on in our gene pool. In the end, anatomy alone may not solve the riddle of the Neanderthals. Other clues are cloaked in the trappings of culture. Extinction or assimilation. The fate of the Neanderthals has yet to be settled. Only this is clear. Around 40,000 years ago, a revolution begins. A new technology sweeps Europe, far more refined than the Neanderthal stoneflakes. These razor-thin blades yield roughly 10 times more cutting edge from the same amount of raw stone. Tied to handles or glued to shafts, they become axes or spears. The toolkit becomes more diverse in form, function, and materials. Bone, antler, horn, and mammoth tusk are harvested and honed. Fine carvings appear. Sewing needles allow the design of better fitting clothing, more effective at heat retention. Such advanced tools have been found with the remains of modern humans, never with the bones of a Neanderthal. Modern people made modern tools. Neanderthals made archaic ones, a simple deduction. But discoveries at the site of Vindia undermine this logic. These bone points found near late Neanderthal remains are far more advanced than their earlier tools. If Neanderthals were beginning to act modern, were they becoming modern? Or were the Neanderthals overwhelmed by newcomers with elaborate tools, superior hunting skills, and perhaps more complex language and social structure? Right at the end of their time, the Neanderthals did start to change their behavior. But I think this is a sign of influence of modern humans being there at the same time. Um, it's possibly a sign that the Neanderthals were under a degree of stress and were having to compete with these newcomers. Um, and it also might be a sign of, uh, uh, maybe, of, of trade between these groups, uh, that they actually were exchanging materials. So 
The Neanderthals were capable of some aspects of this behaviour, but uh, I think in their own case, one had to say, in terms of their own survival, um, it was too little, too late. Around 40,000 years ago, culture took a quantum leap forward. Within an evolutionary blink of an eye, our kind would develop agriculture, invent writing, erect great cities, and split the atom. This acceleration of ideas and technology has carried us from the Ice Age to the Information Age. From humble beginnings, we have become, for better or for worse, the most exceptional species on Earth. The mystery of our origins drives scientists into dark caves and ancient graves to ask the age-old questions. Who are we? Where did we come from? What makes us human? Whatever their fate, the Neanderthals were human in their own unique way. However distant, they are kin. Surely, it was their humanity that helped them survive some 200,000 years, twice as long as modern humans have walked the earth. How far will our humanity carry us? <laughs>